I'm Avnish Miratari, and I'm a product manager for Google Pay. And I'm Jenny, and I'm a user experience research lead and manager for Google Pay. Today, we're going to be talking about building powerful checkout experiences with Google Pay. Even though more and more people are transacting online, and the number of online payments is growing each year, merchants still have trouble maximizing their conversion rates online. Online checkout is notoriously problematic, and we know this because data shows that more than 70% of carts are abandoned across e-commerce sites. Of course, we want customers to be able to change their minds easily when they're making a purchase. However, we don't want cart abandonment due to poor ease of use. Unfortunately, a lot of it can be attributed to that. A significant amount is due to usability issues with form fields. So, for example, studies have found that 90% of sites don't format the credit card expiration field in exactly the same way as it is on the physical card itself. And this can lead to all sorts of errors for users. They get confused. There's some drop off there when that happens. Another issue that has been found is that 86% of sites don't clearly mark which form fields are optional and which are required. And this can lead to users getting stuck, perhaps sometimes even trying to complete fields that are not even applicable to them. And that can be another common point of drop off. While there are many guidelines for improving form usability, and these are really important to implement wherever you do have a form, a better way is to choose a checkout solution that minimizes the form field entries that are required of users. So what I've shown you so far is data from audits of sites. And these are poor experiences, and we know that from usability studies. These are really facts about apps and sites today and their compliance with best practices. But what about users' perceptions? Well, 28% of users report that they experience credit, cards, credit checkout fields that are too long or too complicated. And that's a reason for why they abandon their purchase. You can see that here on the chart. There's only a couple of reason, things that um, people think are worse than that. And that is some of the shipping costs being too high, and also being required to create an account before you check out. However, the issue of too long and complicated checkout processes is worse for them than the experiences they feel about having trust with the credit card on the site, and also with regards to how they feel about returns policies, if sometimes the return policies aren't satisfactory. So not only does the data show that checkout processes are problematic for users, but users are really well aware of it as well. Now, through our work with Google Pay, we intend to mitigate these problems, both for users and for developers. Before we get into some of the new tools we've created to help solve these problems, we'll give you a quick recap of Google Pay and look at some of the latest highlights. Thank you, Jenny. Our mission with Google Pay is to enable the billions of users that are signed into Google to pay with their Google account wherever they are whether that's online, in apps, in stores, and of course, when they transact with Google apps and services. Google Pay uses the payment information that users have already saved to their Google account. When they set up the Google Pay app, save cards to Chrome Autofill, or make purchases on the Play Store, YouTube, or several other Google properties. And hundreds of millions of users globally are already enabled to pay with Google Pay. As a developer, Google Pay provides you access to all of these credentials when users shop on your sites and in your apps. And so by implementing Google Pay, you can maximize conversion by reducing friction at checkout and enable your customers 
to pay with just a couple of clicks. And here are just a few of the largest merchants that have done just that around the world. From Chipotle, eBay, Multikino, Ryanair, Yandex Taxi, and many, many more. Thousands of apps and hundreds of thousands of sites globally now accept Google Pay. And our merchants have seen great results. From the Guilt app, that saw a 10% lift in product view to conversion from Google Pay users over non-Google Pay users. Or Verling, that saw a 17% lift in conversion after they implemented Google Pay on their mobile site. And Starbucks has seen such great adoption with the, with, of Google Pay in their mobile app that they're extending that acceptance to auto reloads to further enhance their customer experience. And as Google Pay has expanded globally, we've worked to customize the app and provide locally relevant features and experiences. A great example of this is in India. Google Pay launched in India with support for UPI, the unified payment interface that allows for instant bank-to-bank -bank transfers. Users in India can use Google Pay to send money to friends, pay their utility bills, recharge their mobile plans, and of course, pay on their favorite sites and apps. And we've seen tremendous adoption from users in India. With over 45 million monthly active users, and $81 billion in annualized transaction volume, and over 2,000 online merchants that accept Google Pay in India alone, varying across use cases from food delivery, retail, travel, movie and event tickets, even trading and investments, and well-known merchants like Swiggy, Zomato, Book My Show, and many, many more. And with simple hassle-free payments, Google Pay is helping accelerate the move in India for both users and merchants from cash to digital. For example, Uber saw that 50% of their Google Pay users in India had previously transacted with cash. And on Redbus, a popular online bus ticketing platform, 15% of their transactions now come from Google Pay. And starting just a few weeks ago, users in India can now book train tickets from Indian railways at no additional cost. Users can search for, buy, and even cancel their train tickets all from right within the app. So that brings you up to speed on what we've been working on recently. And now we're going to talk about what we're doing to make Google Pay even better for users and developers. So let's start with the user experience and simplifying payment experiences. We're adding new customer-facing features to improve your checkout in several different ways. We know that providing more detail and transparency for customers leads to increased conversion rates for businesses. And with dynamic updates, the Google Pay sheet can display shipping options and dynamic pricing with a breakdown that you provide. This allows customers to confirm all relevant purchase details quickly, leading to a faster checkout for them. You'll see this rolling out soon in leading web implementations by Shopify merchants, Square, and Stripe. And a little later in this talk, Avnish will walk you through how you can add dynamic updates with Google Pay to your site. In addition to speeding up checkout, we're working on a feature that quite literally provides monetary value to your customers. We're doing this by displaying saved offers or enabling users to enter a promotion code and seamlessly applying them when users pay by Google Pay. We're looking to test this feature across desktop and across mobile in the coming months. And if you'd like to learn more, please reach out via the support link here from our developer site. Now let's take a look at ways to raise conversions. So we know that simpler checkout experiences make it more likely that users will convert. And this can be achieved using Google Pay. And to make checkout even simpler, we're offering new payment button options these are customized for your sites and your users, and they're aimed at driving higher sales for you. 
For instance, rather than using static assets, web developers can use the Create Button API. This enables a dynamic purchase button that uses the right styling and the right colors and is localized to your user's device or their browser settings, as you can see here. And in addition to that, we've been experimenting with personalized buttons that display important information to users before they enter the checkout flow. So for instance, we can show users exactly what card they'll be paying with. So you can see that on the left-hand screen in a moment, coming up. So you can see it here. They can, they can see exactly what form of payment they're paying with. Or as on the right-hand side, we might be able to like, push messages to them like that they need to sign in or to sign up to Google Pay. And this, all this information can be displayed right on the button. And as the button is hosted and rendered by Google Pay, all of this will happen without you, the developer, having to make any changes. So now let's talk about new places and ways that merchants can accept Google Pay. In India, we're looking to connect merchants and developers to build experiences that bridge across offline and online, as well as across online platforms like desktop and mobile. The Google Pay Omnichannel API allows users to authenticate payments in the Google Pay app that are triggered by entering codes elsewhere. Let's walk through an example of how this works on the Book My Show site which is a popular movie ticketing site in India. A user starts on the desktop site, selects Google Pay, and enters their phone number. This then triggers a notification to the user's Google Pay app on their device. When the users can click into that notification, approve the payment, and see the confirmation right in the Google Pay app, as well as the surface that they're transacting on. In addition to more uh, places to pay, we're also enabling additional payment methods to allow more users to pay with Google Pay on your sites and apps. So for example, users are now able to use Google Pay to pay with their PayPal account easily without any additional logins or passwords if they're signed into Google. For merchants, this interoperability allows access to the millions of users that have already stored their PayPal credentials in their Google account. And this feature is live across merchants in the US and Germany, and will be rolling out to more countries later this year. And so you can see an example here on the Flixbus app, which is a popular app to buy bus tickets across Europe. And users can just select their PayPal account if they have it in their Google, uh, in their Google Pay and pay without any additional friction. And as we add payment methods, we're making it really easy for developers to accept these methods via a standardized interface. So for example, you can already accept cards and now PayPal. And coming soon, UPI payments will be available via the same unified API. So what that means is with a single integration, Indian merchants will be able to accept Google Pay for their users wherever they operate. And global merchants can accept UPI payments for their Indian users. So we've talked about some of the new features we've enabled with Google Pay, as well as some of those that we're working on enabling soon as well as some of the steps we've taken to simplify the integration. Now I'm going to talk about one of the features that Jenny mentioned earlier, dynamic updates, and show you how you can add dynamic updates to your checkout flow with Google Pay. So to start with, you'll need Google Pay on your site. And if you don't, if you don't already have Google Pay, you can check out our developer docs to learn how you can do that. But just to recap, here are some of the steps you'd, you'd take to enable Google Pay. Load pay.js, which is our uh, Google Pay JavaScript library, Call is ready to pay. That's an API that, determine, that you can use to determine how and when to show Google Pay. Then if you use the Purchase button, we recommend using the Create Button API that Jenny talked about. There's a display of the right Google Pay Purchase button that's customized for your, to your preferences as well as to the user's settings. Finally, when you're ready to accept payment from the user, call Load Payment Data to present the Google Pay sheet. Now that you added Google Pay to your site, let's talk about how you can enable dynamic updates. You can do so in three easy steps. First, provide price and shipping info in your payment data request. Second, specify a callback function and the callback intents you'd like to listen to that affect your checkout. Finally, 
update your payment data request based on what the user selects on the Google Pay sheet. So in today's example, I'll show you how a call, the callback function is triggered when a user selects a shipping option on the Google Pay sheet. So let's walk through each of those steps in a little bit more detail. You can provide price in the transaction info object that already exists today. Which, which you can also do now is to, to, uh, to present display items to the user that give the user more information and allow them to confirm their purchase right on the Google Pay sheet. So for example, you can provide subtotal, shipping, taxes, and discounts. And if you require shipping and enable multiple shipping options, you can set these via the shipping option parameters. Again, with shipping options, we'd recommend using labels to display the price to users, as well as a descriptive information to, to let users know, for example, when items will be delivered for each shipping option so they can make an appropriate selection. Next, provide a callback function when you construct the Google Pay client. Determine the updates you'd want to listen to and also specify those in the callback intents. So again, we're showing shipping option here. Then when, you're, when, when that's done, you can call load payment data to present the Google Pay sheet and allow the user to select their payment and shipping select, uh, information. Finally, when the user makes selections, you'll receive a callback on the callback function you specify, and you should handle these and update the payment data request appropriately. So uh, you can see here, for example, the callback function is updated based on the user's selected shipping option, so the total price now reflects the price with the user's selected shipping option, as well as new display items that can be uh, shown to the user if those have changed. And that's it. I'm going to show you a quick demo of how that looks uh, on my Pixel. Can we switch to demo, please? Thank you. Nice. OK, so I'm heading to New York this weekend for a developer um, event next week. And I'd like to buy some Google swag here. So I'm going to go to the Google Store site here. And let's select this sweatshirt. And let me click to buy with Google Pay. So you can see my, my payment information displayed, as well as shipping addresses. It's already got our Google New York office uh, selected as a shipping address. And for shipping options, there's $10 standard shipping. That only gets there in five business days, which would be too late. I could pick $20 for shipping. That sounds pricey. Let me see if I can actually have this shipped me right here in Mountain View and pick it up before I leave. There, when I selected uh, the Mountain View address, you, you notice that there's a free shipping in California option um, that didn't apply earlier. The price updated and I can, uh, to 2215, and I can flick in and see the details for, that, uh, for the transaction so I can confirm that shipping is indeed free. And now I'm ready to pay. So I'll just click to pay. Payment information is and, merch, and shipping is select, sent to the merchant, and the order is confirmed. And that's it. Dynamic updates are available for web developers in our test environment starting today. So we encourage you to tech, check out our documentation or stop by our code labs at I.O. right here to test it out. Thanks, Avnish. So next, we're going to talk about how you can easily accept Google Pay on your site or in your app. If you build your own site or app, we've made it really simple for you to add Google Pay. Google Pay uses a JSON request format to make it very simple for you to accept Google Pay consistently with the same request across, Google, across Android, the web, as well as other Google services like Actions on Google. Google Pay works with your existing processor and can be integrated with just a few lines of code. We've expanded our list of supported payment processors to over 60 processors globally. You can reach out to any of our processor partners, and they're prepared to walk you through anything you need for easy integration with Google Pay. Next, if you're a merchant that uses hosted checkout platforms, we've also worked to make Google Pay broadly available and easy to add for all merchants, including those that don't build their own sites. For example, if you're a big commerce merchant processing with PayPal or with Stripe, you can now easily enable Google Pay for your customers. Google Pay is available on several commerce and hosted checkout platforms globally, including Shopify, Square, PayU, and TPay, and many more. 
And if you're a commerce platform that offers hosted solutions, do contact us via our developer site, and then you can find out how you can easily onboard all your merchants and provide your merchants with a better checkout experience. Now that we've talked about the new features and improvements we're making to Google Pay, we're going to walk you through some of the guidelines to ensure that you can make the most of what Google Pay has to offer. These will help you create checkout experiences that increase the likelihood that your customers are successful and satisfied from start to finish. Google Pay enab enables customers to share their payment information in a single click. So Google Pay can help you onboard new users without them having to manually enter all their information. For example, here in the DoorDash app, Google Pay is enabled as a default to help new DoorDash users get through to check out quickly. And new Starbucks users who have Google Pay can quickly top up their rewards cards without having to go through a payment method setup flow. Now, requiring account creation before users have gone through the checkout flow slows down the purchase and can lead to abandoned carts. I think we saw in that graph at the beginning on users' perceptions that users don't like that at all. No one wants it. So use Google Pay for a faster guest checkout experiences. And then you can recommend to your users to create an account after they've come and fulfilled the, the tasks that they came to your site or app for. In the Macy's checkout process here, you can see guest checkout on the left here, and then the option to create an account after they've gone through checkout on the right-hand side. Now, it's important to include and present all the relevant transaction details for the user before they take that final action to purchase. And studies have shown that a significant number of users abandon the purchase because they can't see that total cost up front. I'm sure that we've all done that at one point or another. With Google Pay, you can use dynamic updates, as we talked about earlier, to show an updated price based on the shipping selections, and that's directly within the payment sheet. And so your users then can check out quickly and confidently. And it's important to the user that their specific payment method, such as their specific credit card that is being used with Google Pay, is clearly visible to them so that they can be sure about that form of payment they're using. So we recommend also displaying Google Pay alongside that payment method used by the customer right throughout the checkout process, including on the confirmation screens, as you can see here, and also on receipts. This gives users the full context when they see the confirmation screen or perhaps a receipt in email, and that consistency continues to build their user trust. Now, if you sell tickets or passes, you can use Google Pay and our Passes API together to provide a delightful post-purchase experience for your users. So here you see Ryanair. They've enabled Google Pay as a payment method in their app. And then once users have purchased their ticket, they can save it to their app. They can save their boarding pass to have it ready there and then for where they, when they go to board their flight. And with Google Pay, you can also enable quick single item purchases right from the product pages themselves, as Etam have done here. This enables even quicker purchasing, so your customers don't have to add their items to the cart before going through the checkout process. They can just purchase directly. So implementing these practices can help you make better experiences for your users, enabling them to check out quickly and easily every single time. So that wraps up the content of our presentation today. If you want to know more, then please just visit these links here. The first provides guidelines on implementation, and the second is access to our brand assets. So we've shared a lot of details with you today, and we're excited to see how you take them to create your own delightful purchase experiences, whether that's adding dynamic updates or enabling purchases directly from your product pages. 
And today I'm happy to announce Google Pay Developers Live, our marquee developer event dedicated to Google Pay. And this will be happening later this year in London and will be live streamed globally. So please save the date and sign up at the link shown here to get updates on the event. And if you're interested in learning more about saving tickets or other passes to Google Pay after purchase, be sure to check out my list and Jose's session, Engaging Customers Beyond Payments, Tickets, Transit, and Boarding Passes. And that's on Thursday at 2.30, right here on Stage 7. And while you're here at I.O., you can meet our team anytime at the Payments Sandbox. And if you'd like to con continue the conversation today, come join us at our developer meetup. That's happening in the community lounge starting at 4.20, and it's on the porch of stage one. And so that just leaves me to say thank you all so much for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.